I don't know if you've noticed this, but people like Mags Visaggio were out there saying, hey, the year of Mags apparently isn't going to happen this year. I could use some money to pay some bills and eat some dinner. Not exactly a glowing endorsement of the climate of comic books, especially creators working on the indie scene, thinking that they're going to be the next James Tynan. It turns out it's a little bit more difficult than they thought it would be. And when you hear these people talk, when I talk about these people, I'm talking about somewhat notable or in some cases, definitely notable names on the indie scene saying, oh, my goodness, we don't know why people don't want to read our stories anymore. We can get them published, but nobody actually wants to pay for them. And it turns out the customer is a key ingredient in this entire conversation. And this is just it's also sad. I'll talk about another creator who's essentially homeless starting this week. I think is a terrible situation. And it's been very frustrating as someone who's been putting a voice to the frustrations of the readers themselves saying, hey, this is what's going on here. This is the direction that you're going. And here's why it's not going to work. Here's the proof that it doesn't work. Here's further proof that it's not working now. And what you're doing is only being harmful to the industry. And in time, it's going to be even more and more harmful. This is only going to get worse for you guys. But no, nobody wants to listen. All these creators want to act like this stuff just came out of nowhere. And nobody has been sending up warning signs saying, listen, you guys have to stop this. This has to change or you're going to wind up destroying the business that you count on, you know, to pay your bills, to feed your family. And that is what's happening right now. There's an article on sketch.com. And I definitely encourage people to go check out that website. He has some really interesting articles. There is a paywall on that one, but it's not nearly as expensive as like ICV2.com, which I think is an enormous ripoff. And while I do think, uh, I think his name is David Harper, the guy that runs that site, comes at this stuff from a different perspective, we basically always end up identifying like the same problems. Now, I have my perspective. He has his perspective, but I do appreciate that he's putting this information out there. He talked to some creators about how bad the industry is right now, and it's absolutely awful. In short, it seems tough. Writer Kieran Gillen said of the current atmosphere. There's the weird irony that it's easier to tell stories than ever before, but harder to really hit. As writer-artist Liana Conga stated, we're experiencing the cumulative impact of the last three years. While there were high times throughout the pandemic-fueled stretch Conga spoke to, the struggles everyone worried of early on have taken hold and is generating well-earned concern amongst the people who crafted these comic books. And yes, early on during the pandemic, there was this time where things actually seemed like they were getting better for everyone but Marvel and DC. Like when you look at the numbers, like, whoa, there's an increased interest in Image Comics. All of a sudden, there's enormous interest in Boom Studios, and things were getting better. But that's basically all died down, and it died down about a year and a half ago, and it's only getting worse and worse. And what I thought was really interesting about what I just read there was the quote from Kieran Gillen himself where he said, there's the weird irony that it's easier to tell stories than ever before, but harder to really hit. Now, Kieran Gillen doesn't really do crowdfunding. Kieran Gillen isn't doing Facebook comic books or Instagram comic books. Kieran Gillen's not doing web comics. So he's not talking about it's easier to tell stories because there's more platforms to tell stories. He's saying it's easier to tell stories with established publishers in the American comic book industry than ever before. It almost doesn't matter what you pitch them. They will accept it. The problem is People aren't buying it. People aren't responding to it. And I think that is one of the enormous underlying problems in the American comic book industry. What is the standard for an American comic book? Do you remember three or four years ago when Mags Visaggio was out on social media and bragging that they sent a pitch over to Eric Stevenson, the publisher over at Image, the guy that makes the decisions, and within two minutes he had already agreed for Image Comics to publish the book? That means he never read the pitch. He didn't care about the concept. He only cared that it was a Mags Visaggio book, which is a problem because Mags Visaggio, as far as I can tell, has never actually sold a comic book. And that's the state we're in, where it doesn't matter if you're successful. It doesn't matter if the customer base in the direct market actually wants to read this creator. It doesn't matter if they have a track record of success. It matters if Eric Stevenson likes you. So you've ended up with this weird line from Image Comics where, yeah, there are things out there that are really good. I mean, I really like Rogue Son, and I really like The Sacrifices. Those are really good concepts from really good writers like Ryan Parrott and a Rick Remender, but they're sitting there side by side with some of the worst comic books you'll ever read. Go read Rockstar and Softboy and tell me that's not the most offensive, disgusting, worst written comic book you've ever read in your life. Also from Image Comics, there is no standard anymore. Think about IDW. What was the standard for IDW 
10 years ago, the best licensed comic books that you're going to be able to find on the market. Fast forward to five years ago, you had an amazing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ongoing at the time, and you also had a pretty damn fabulous Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, from what I'm told. Seems like Power Rangers fans absolutely love that. What's going on at the same time? Some of the worst G.I. Joe stories of all time, the worst Transformers stories of all time, Destroying Mask and all these other properties, and you're like, well, what is the standard for IDW? If they pick up a license that I personally like, can I trust that they're going to deliver a good comic book? Even some of the smaller publishers that I've really enjoyed lately, Vault Comics, there for a minute, like for two years, you were going to see the coolest genre stories when it came to like horror, sci-fi, and fantasy in the entire industry with the best, most creative stories that you could find. Then all of a sudden they get a little bit of success. People start talking about Vault Comics. Next thing you know, it's Tim Seeley's money shot. And they ruined their entire standard because they wanted a big name. You go to a Blaze Comics, they were doing the coolest shit. They were going out to Europe, they were going to Korea, they were going to Japan, and they were finding those undiscovered gems that had been released on the American market, the best Conan comic books that you could find. Well, what happens? You get a little bit of success. People are like, oh man, this a Blaze idea is really cool. I know exactly who they are. Well, we got to create our own comic book line, so we're going to hire Max Bemis to write a Conan-related story not realizing the reason people went to a blaze was to avoid people like Max Bemis. They will print anything. That's why it's so much easier today for Kieran Gillen to get the green light on all of his stories. Yes, we will publish anything that you actually submit to us, regardless of the quality. And you wonder why there's this weird irony that nobody actually wants to pay for the damn things because no publisher out there is actually trying to produce an amazing comic book line and creators aren't going out there thinking about who are the customers for Marvel Comics. What do customers of IDW expect from their comic books? Never ever thinking about the customers when they're creating the stories and crafting their universes, only thinking about themselves and wondering why nobody wants to read. This is what Junie Ba, a relative newcomer to the industry, had to say about comics. There's a vibe that publishing houses are struggling to stay afloat and don't really know how to market and reach new audiences. Every person I talk to in the business keeps saying, it's tough out there and everyone is struggling. Kind of scary, honestly. This sense that all the ships are taking water. And this idea that you can't reach a new audience, it's, it's just so expensive and so difficult to reach new people. It is becoming harder. Certainly, Facebook has made it much, much harder. Elon Musk and Twitter are about to make it much, much harder to it grow awareness in what you're doing, but it's absolutely available. Just look at what Eric July did with the Ripperverse. I believe his sales are north of $5.5 million or $6 million on two comic books that he funded all in-house and he's hiring these amazing creators like Chuck Dixon to work with him. Eric July went out there and established a rapport with people. He said, this is who I am. If you like that, I'm going to give you content that you like. Then eventually I'm going to create a comic book. And if you would like to support me that way, that's also available too. That is a way of actually reaching people and creating a new audience and actually marketing yourself. You can actually go out there and show people you're not an absolute dickhead and tell them directly why they should buy your product. Uh, Pink Cat is doing the exact same thing, but on Instagram. Do I think Pink Cat is a great artist? Not really. But if you go to her Instagram, you can see that Pink Cat has made this amazing following that she's monetized it is absolutely raking in the dough creating web comics based on a pink cat and putting them out on instagram yet this is a person that was supposed to go to a comic con and got canceled because the dumbasses in the industry said ah she's not one of us she doesn't deserve a spot at the table even though she's likely earning two to three times more money annually off of her art than they are it's absolutely crazy that they don't want to learn from any of these people EVS has been out there for years showing these morons that if you go out there and engage people directly, if you speak to them, if you look them in the eye, tell them who you are, what you stand for, what your standard is when it comes to comic books, they will come. They will come support you. But they all want to look down on Eric July. They want to look down on Pink Cat. They want to look down on EVS. Think about Rachel Smythe went out there and created, I think, a web comic for five years now has some of the best-selling trades in the entire comic book industry. You can go out to Webtoons. There are all sorts of ways to go out there and discover your audience, to engage your audience, to actually speak to them and grow it, rather than just sitting there idly going, oh my goodness, everything is falling down. What can I do? Well, how about not going out there and engaging the customers 
and telling them they're assholes. How about having a social media presence that's completely bereft of ever speaking about any of your projects or why people should like them? Nobody is out there actually pimping out the stuff that they're doing. No one's hyping their own crap because they're so busy telling me and other people that we're assholes. Well, guess what? I knew that. I've known that for 20 years now, and I'm quite comfortable with it. Don't tell me that you can't create a new audience when it comes to comic book customers. I had zero subscribers six years ago. Am I an enormous success? Do I have a million subscribers? No, I got about 30,000 subscribers and I got a nice little home and I've engaged an audience and they do seem to be somewhat loyal and they want to hear what I have to say about the industry. I hate to break it to you, but none of these shitty little publishers are ever going to market your book. All of that's going to be done by you. If you don't have your own blood, sweat and tears into your creator own shit that you've partnered with Image or Dark Horse or whatever, it ain't never going to find an audience because there's so much crap out there Nobody even knows what to look for anymore. This is what Harper had to say at the end of the article that is not behind the paywall. It seemed like every person I talked to admitted that's an incredible period for original ideas finding a home. But like writer Erica Schultz put it, whether or not the market will support it in a commercial sense is another conversation. Words and phrases like uncertainty, tough, and uphill battle were consistent refrains amongst creators. And this isn't just an issue facing new creators. Even someone like Kelly Thompson, a well-liked established writer with major big two work to her name, is finding this moment to be a painful one. And go actually look at her presence on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Look how she talks to people. She's constantly talking down to the customers. She's constantly trying to one-up them, constantly telling you why you should not support her in any of her fucking books. Kelly Thompson is not a big name. Just because you wrote a couple of comic books from Marvel and DC doesn't make you established anymore. Nothing is really selling these days. Kelly Thompson is a fucking nobody. Go out in the street and ask 100 people who Kelly Thompson is. 99, actually probably more like 100, aren't even going to know what the hell you're talking about. And then the idea of what Erica Schultz said, whether or not the market will support it in a commercial sense, is another question. Fuck no, are you crazy? That is the only conversation worth having when you decide to make your story, when the publisher and you decide to work together and put the story out. Is there any commercial viability to what you're creating? Is there an audience for it? If there's an audience for it, how do we market to that audience? How do we speak to that audience? How do we let them know that it's there? If there is no commercial viability for your product, it should not be being published by a comic book publisher. You should be doing it yourself on Kickstarter on Indiegogo, on Webtoon, and doing your own proof of concept. That is the biggest conversation that should be happening every single time one of these ideas are pitched, whether it's creator-owned or it's established character. Is there commercial viability to the fucking character or the story or what you're trying to convey? And if there is, who actually are the audience? If there is no audience available in the direct market, then you should not be publishing it as a periodic comic book, it should be going directly to the graphic novel scene and should be talking to the customers there. That is the biggest thing going on right now. They are creating stories and characters for an entire audience that doesn't like them, that has rejected them, that refuses to give them money, but they've decided that that audience doesn't exist or they haven't voiced themselves enough. As if we haven't been here for six to 10 years explaining to you every step of the fucking way why this is a bad idea. Why will this character not work? Why is this change never going to get over? We've given you all the answers. The customers have spoken. They've told you why you got to this place. Now it's up to these fucking dipshits to actually listen, maybe engage some people, and find that mysterious audience they've been searching for for a fucking decade now. It's absolutely insane. Like I mentioned, there's a comic book creator that's been out there running your mouth for a lot of years, Tess Fowler, if you know who that is, is fucking homeless now, talking about we have to be out this week, likely to be living in a hotel or in my car within the week now. Yet you have these morons out there making a Kickstarter to go help out the WGA people, even though their strike is already over. You have people in your own industry that are fucking homeless. This problem is going to get worse before it ever can conceivably get better. But none of them want to acknowledge that they know what's wrong. Like you and I haven't explained this to them every step of the way, and it's absolutely insane. A great example of this is what happened at FlameCon 2023. They had an entire panel 
talking about their agenda to queer up mainstream comic books because this has been oh so fucking successful on a financial level. There's also a link in the video description.